Right, this is the first time I've ever worked from home and I'm probably gonna have to start by saying Happy New Year because if you're watching this, it's probably the start of 2021. Um, I'm filming this and it's now the last day of 2020, so hopefully next year will be a bit better for all of us. So yeah, let's crack on. Right, so this is how it started. Um, a little while ago, I fitted a Max Mini ECU to my um, ZTEC Turbo Van, and also fitted one to a mate's SD170 powered Mark II Fiesta. Um, I put the videos online, people see it, and loads of people asked me um, to supply them an ECU, but they wanted a wiring loom to suit a ZTEC. Now, I made one wiring loom, I sold it to a guy, and he loved it, and then his mate wanted one, and I really just didn't have the time to be fabricating wiring looms all the time. Um, so I got in contact with a company and I had a batch of ZTEC wiring looms made um, for a ZTEC. So these will fit like a 1.8 ZTEC, a 2 litre ZTEC, silver top and black top. They'll, they'll fit anything like full base really, so like CVH, um, ZVH, stuff like that. You might have to change a few of the connectors around, but like you know the base wiring harness that you need is there. Um, let me please just start this video by saying though, um, if you're thinking about buying a Max ECU Mini ECU and wiring loom kit off of me, you will need a laptop. Now, I'm not going to advertise these kits as plug and play because I feel that a plug and play, um, the plug and play, the title of like plug and play um, makes people think that they can just plug the ECU in, turn the key, and away you go. That is not the case. Um, if you're going to buy this ECU and loom kit off of me for a ZTEC, you will need a laptop you will need to be able to connect that laptop to the internet and you will need some knowledge on wiring and you know using software and stuff like that. Now, I will put a base map on every ECU that I send out. It will be for a completely standard two liter black top, but that will get most engines up and running. Um, please bear in mind like, what injectors you're using and stuff like that. Um, so that's being said, let me crack on and show you what you're buying. Right, so if you've just bought a Max ECU Mini and ZTEC Loom kit off me, this is what you will get. First of all, you get the Max ECU Mini in this box. You get, first thing is this. This is a, uh, this is a, like a mini quick start wiring diagram. So it shows you what, you know, all the pins on the, all the plugs do and stuff like that. It shows you, you know, quick guys how to wire up certain things. If you want to add things like all pressure sensors or wheel speed sensors and stuff like that. If you want to change coils, it also shows you how to rewire some of the coils and stuff like that. It also shows you how to wire up a fuel pump relay, which, you know, if you've just chucked a, a ZTEC Turbo or ZTEC on throttle bodies into your Westfield or your, your Lotus 7 or Mark II Fiesta or Mark III Escort or, you know, Mark II Escort or whatever, you're going to need to wire up a fuel pump. Um, and that's the diagram how to do it. So, yeah, that's like a little quick reference guide and it's quite handy. Um, right, so let's start with the Max Mini ECU itself. Uh, this is the control unit. Um, it's very compact, very small, very light, as you can see. All the specs are on the website if you want to look up the sizes and stuff like that. It has four little legs, so it's very easy to mount to a firewall or build you put in your glove box or something like that. That's what I do. Um, it's not waterproof, but it's splash proof. So, um, you know, if you've got it in the glove box of your Mark 1, Mark 2 Fiesta or whatever, and it's very like damp in there, you don't have to worry about any of the damp getting inside the ECU because it is, um, you know, more damp proof. Um, it, this here on the top is the map sensor barb, so that's what you'll connect your map sensor to. That has to connect to the inlet manifold after the throttle body, so between the, the ports on the cylinder head and the throttle body, because it does need to read vacuum, not just onto a boost pipe or something stupid like that. Um, I wouldn't go teeing this into any fuel pressure regulators or anything stupid like that. It's nice to have that pipe connected straight to the inlet manifold on its own run. Um, this is the main connector to connect to the wiring loom itself very nicely made and under here is the USB plug to connect to the laptop. That being said, you also get in the box the appropriate wire that you will need to connect this ECU to your laptop. So yeah, you don't have to go buying any RS232 converters or anything like that. When you download the Mtune software, um, all the drivers are built in. Oh yeah, so going on to the Mtune software, the reason why in this kit you don't get a CD with a software on it or a USB dongle or anything like that is because um, Max ECU are constantly updating the Mtune software. So if you download it off 
their site, you will get you know the most up-to-date version. And even if you've got an out-of-date version on your laptop anyway, as soon as you connect to the internet, it will prompt you to update the software. And once you've updated Mtune, it will then prompt you to update your ECU as well. It's very easy to do, just step by steps. Um, so the Max Mini ECU itself, uh, the unit itself has four injector drivers, high impedance injectors only, so most injectors to be fair nowadays. It has four ignition outputs, so if you want to wire it up to do coil and plug, you can. I'll do another video on that. Um, inputs, it's got an inlet air temperature sensor input. It's got a throttle position sensor input, and it's got a coolant temperature sensor input. Uh, it's obviously got the built-in 400 kPa map sensor, so this is good for most people's applications. You've got two spare zero to five volt analog inputs, two extra digital inputs, so you know things like all pressure sensors, well, the zero to five volt for all pressure sensors and stuff like that. But for digital inputs, they can be like you know um, like wheel speed sensors and stuff like that. And it's also got four extra GPO outputs. Uh, it's got CAN bus as well, so you can connect this to like the OBD port, and then you can sniff out things like over OBD. Like, um, it, it, obviously if your car's got OBD, you can sniff out things like coolant temp, air temp, and you can, rather than wiring them up, you can actually just suck them out of OBD, and the Mtune software will mirror the, you know, the readings, so that's quite handy as well. But for this application, it's all pre-wired into the loom, which I will show you next. Um, it's also got a Cortex M3 120 megahertz main processor. So yeah, that's good to know. Right, moving on to the wiring loom. Right, so this is the Max ZTEC wire loom. I will get it out of the bag and obviously lay it on the table so you get a better idea of what you're looking at. Right, so I have the ZTEC wire loom laid out on the table. I don't have a big enough table to lay it all the way out. I'm sorry about that, so you're just gonna have to make do with this. Um, first of all is the 32 pin connector that connects to the Max Mini ECU itself. And then obviously this side of the harness goes through your firewall and that side goes into the engine bay. Um, first of all, let's talk about this side of the harness. So obviously that plugs into your ECU. Over here, built into the loom, these two are um, built-in inline fuses. One's for the ECU and one's for the coil. Um, and everything runs off these two. So you can just connect these together if you want and then you just need a, a good um, ignition, a switched ignition live to feed them. Um, I've left, I've still wired in all the um, extra cables like CAN bus and stuff like that and inputs. Um, the two blue wires are both ignition feed so if you want to use them for fully sequential you can the green wires are outputs so they can be used for things like fuel pump cooling fan you know uh, rev counters that sort of thing everything's down here or you can look at the manuals online oh yeah talking about the manuals i highly advise reading the online manual off the max ecu website before you even contemplate buying this because it will give you a general idea of what you're getting yourself into. That being said, I don't want to scare people and put people off, but I just want people to have a bit more of an understanding of what they're buying, not just you know being sold a dream. So if you buy this, obviously it is easy to connect up and to get running, but please don't expect to just plug it all in, turn the key and away you go. There is a few steps you'll need to do. Um, and the manual goes through all that anyway, especially like quick start guides and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, carrying on. Um, this is obviously, so this is all inside the car, you've wired all this in, uh, this goes through your firewall and now you've got this half of the loom in the engine bay. So I'm going to start with the first one I grab, which is, this all labelled, this is the air temperature sensor. So I've left, I've wired this ECU up with a, uh, a two pin connector and it fits um, air temperature sensors like this. I sell these on my website or you can buy them off my eBay shop and stuff like that. My base map will come pre-configured for the sensors that I sell. So if you don't want to have to muck about calibrating this, just buy one of these inlet air temp sensors. This is more of like a COSI style sensor. So it's um, a very, very fast acting sensor and it's perfect for turbocharged applications or supercharged or force induction, whatever. Um, it also works well with um, naturally aspirated vehicles as well, like throttle bodies, that sort of thing. So yeah, that's the air temperature sensor. Moving on to this wire here. This is the um, ECU ground. Now this must be grounded to the cylinder head. So like um, just any little bolt on the head or like an inlet manifold bolt or the coil pack bracket bolt or just drill and tap or something like that. Um, and ideally it would be nice to just ground it to the same point moving over here as the coil. Um, so the coil's got a, a ground on it as well. You can ground these in the same place. It's, it's kind of ideal. Uh, moving on. This is the throttle position sensor. Now the plug on this is pre-wired for a, oh, I've lost it. Right, let me go get it. 
Right, I'm back. So, the throttle position sensor is pre-wired for a standard ZTEC throttle position sensor. This is a throttle body off of a two litre blacktop, so the kind of engine that you'll find in a Mark One Focus or you know even a petrol transit connect or something like that. Um, you don't have to use this TPS, you can just cut the plug off and you can put whatever plug you want, any three wire throttle position sensor will work with fine. Um, like throttle bodies and stuff like that obviously won't have that connector. Um, again, very simple to wire up. Um, the manual will show you all different types of sensors and wiring configurations. But if you do get stuck, let me know and I can help with that, not a problem. Moving on to here is the injector harness. Again, this is quite self-explanatory. Injector one, two, three, four, or four, three, two, one, whatever way you want to look at it. Number four being closest to the core pack and number one being closest to the timing belt on a ZTEC. Um, again, these are EV1 connectors, which is the standard Ford um, injector connector style. So yeah, but if you want to run different style of injectors, you can cut the plugs off, whatever plugs on there you want, or you can just buy the adapters off the internet, which some people like to do because they don't like to you know, do wiring themselves. Next round is the coolant temperature sensor. Again, I've pre-wired this for a ZTEC coolant temperature sensor, which looks like this. Now, this is a what people normally call a cylinder head temperature sensor. So on a ZTEC, if you're looking under the bonnet at the engine, it's on the left-hand side, on a blacktop ZTEC anyway, it's on the left-hand side, just above the alternator and like the far left of the engine. Um, and I've pre-wired the loom to use this sensor just because it comes standard with ZTEC. And again, my base map will be fully calibrated for this coolant temperature sensor just to make ease of use. Again, you don't have to use that if you've not got this sensor or you're running a CVH or you're running a ZVH or you've, maybe you've got the coolant temperature sensor screwed into the thermostat housing or something like that. I do also sell these coolant temperature sensors. Um, again, this is just a two pin connector, EV1 style. I can supply the connector with this as well. They're on my website, they're on my eBay shop. Um, I can probably do a calibration file for the Max ECU for these as well. Because um, a lot of people just screw these into the side of the head or thermostat housing or whatever you want. So yeah, right. Now, lastly, nearly lastly, is the crank sensor. Obviously, this is just a standard VR type crank sensor. Two pin EV1 connector again. Uh, this is a shielded cable, so you need to keep this away from HT leads and any sort of electrical interference. Again, it's labeled crank sensor and it's plug and play and it's pretty self-explanatory. Now, moving on to the coil. Uh, eagle-eyed ones of you out there will probably notice that this core plug is not the standard Ford ZTEC core pack plug. Now, the reason for this is, many years ago when I started fitting aftermarket management to ZTEC engines, I quickly found that the standard ZTEC, um, the, st the standard ZTEC core packs were prone to failing and they weren't great calls. I mean, they fail on standard cars at the best of times. So I started swapping over and started using these um, these are Volkswagen core packs, although this one says KMS on it because I've had it in, the, you know, in my storeroom forever and I use it for testing and stuff like that. Um, although it says KMS on it, it is a Volkswagen core pack. If you go on eBay and just search VW core pack, you'll see it. They all look like this. Um, stay away from like the cheaper brands though. If you're going to get one, try and get like a Delphi one or a Bosch one or something a bit more branded or even a genuine one from like TPS or Volkswagen, Audi, wherever you want to go. Um, they're not a lot of money. Even a decent one can be had for about £30. If you really want, you can use standard blacktop ZTEC leads. They just about reach if you mount the core pack so the cylinder head is here. Um, but I just use, if you go on eBay and type in Right, let me remember. If you type in on eBay, um, Audi A2 petrol HT leads, there is a fella in the UK that makes HT leads for an Audi A2, which obviously will fit that core pack, and they are quite a nice length for a ZTEC as well, like they push down into the um, into the, the valley where the plug sit on a ZTEC. Um, so if you get yourself a set of them, he does. he's got like, I think he's got like 24 different color options as well, so you could even have like, pink HT leads if you wanted, but I'd highly advise getting a set of them because you know, if you're gonna get your car up and running, you're gonna wanna put new leads and a new core pack on it anyway. There's no point doing everything new or getting everything wired up, ready to go. Then you hit the dyno to find that you've got, you know, spark breakdown problems because you've got like a worn out ZTEC core pack or something like that. So you might as well just get new and the whole lot can be bought for like under 50 pound anyway. Um, so that's why 
I have put a Volkswagen style plug on here. If you really, really, really want the OEM look and you really want to use the standard ZTEC core pack, um, you can run the standard ZTEC core pack on the Max ECU Mini, but one, you will need to change this plug. I can supply this plug if needed. I can even swap it for you if needed. But second, um, also, the Max Mini doesn't have built-in igniters. So if you ever, if, see I'm into like drag racing and stuff like that. So if you ever see people trying to go for like big horsepower four cylinders and stuff like that, they tend to go over to coils that have got um, like built-in igniters like Audi R8 coils and stuff like that. This coil pack has got built-in igniters on the top. That's why it needs a live and earth and a pair of triggers, five volt triggers. The ZTEC coil pack doesn't have built-in igniters. So you will have to fit them, or I can fit them if you really want. Um, you'll have to fit um, the igniters in line or make a little patch harness or something like that. But for, for what it's worth, just fit one of these coils. If it was me, just use one of those. It's a far better coil anyway. I've had one of these coils up to 550 horsepower on a four cylinder ZTEC with no ignition breakdown problems. So just get one of them and you know, you fit and forget it and it will just go on forever. So yeah. That being said, I think that about covers it. Now, the next part of this video you're gonna see, I've already recorded it. So I've sort of recorded this next half before this half. So if I start contradicting myself and it doesn't make sense, just just call me out on it if you want. I don't mind, I'm in for a bit of banter, sod it, whatever. So yeah, hopefully um, it will make sense. So yeah, moving on to Jamie's Fiesta. Right, so you've seen the ZTEC ECU and Loom kit that I sell now. So now let me kind of demonstrate how you fit it. Um, the car we're going to be fitting it to today is Jamie's Fiesta, aren't we? Ta-da! Um, this is Jamie's Mark III Fiesta SX Fiesta Turbo Replica. Um, is it not an SX? What is it? It's just a 1.1. Oh, all right. This is Jamie's grey 1.1 Fiesta with an SX boot lid. You can see why I got confused, can't you? So yeah, Fiesta Turbo kitted. Now, the engine this has got fitted to it is my old engine. This is the blacktop ZTEC turbo out of my Fiesta race car. Uh, it's fully full, just got cams, it's ported, it's got M12 head stud conversion. Um, it's running a Mitsubishi Evo exhaust manifold and turbocharger on a uh, Danesty adapter plate. Uh, DA Engineering. DA Performance uh, D Engineering. Sorry. On a DA Performance and Engineering, I'll drop you a link in the comments to his um, website that he's just launched. Um, that's his adapter plate to bolt a ZTEC, uh, to bolt a Evo exhaust manifold to, to a ZTEC. Oh, we got there in the end, didn't we? we got there Jeez. In the end. Um, so yeah, this is on an MTX box as well. It's all, you know, Focus RS kind of stuff, or it will be. Um, so yeah, this is the ZTEC Loom, as you have seen. And the Max Mini is here. So what we're going to do first is we've got this plate which goes up in the corner here on the Mark III Fiestas and uh, Jamie's going to drill a hole and poke all the loom through into the engine bay and then I'll, um, I'll go through each step at a time. Yeah. Right, yeah. let's crack on. Mm. 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 Um, so we drilled the hole in that plate, Jamie had a little um, bulkhead grommet so we just sort of sliced down the side and pushed the loom through. Uh, we've got the loom laying out now, so we're going to start by running the cables over. And um, we're going to have to change a few little things because the throttle position sensor, as I've shown you, um, which is this one, this is for a standard black top, so like a 2 litre Focus or you know, even a 1.8 or even Petrol Transit Connect. This is the same plug um, for that TPS, but Jamie is running an old school HO inlet with the fatter type plug for like the old school ZTEC style of plug. So um, I'm going to cut that plug off and I'm going to repin it to fit that. Also, the standard injector plugs, which I've sh obviously already shown you, which are these. These are EV1 style plugs. So again, standard blacktop focus. Um, but this is really easily configurable to most applications. So again, uh, I'm going to take the plugs off of that and I'm going to put different plugs on. These ones to be in fact exact and i'm going to put these plugs on because the ho inlet runs side feed injectors so i've got these little connectors in stock as well so if we put four of them on i know you can get adapters but you know we're not really going to muck about changing it too much in the future anyway so uh i'm just going to put change the four injector plugs so yeah let's start laying the loom out cool so i changed the throttle position plug to one that suits jamie's throttle position sensor 
I changed all these injector plugs to the Subaru style plug, you see? So they'll all plug on there nicely now. I don't know if that's the right one. Injector one, no it's not. <laughs> so yeah, let's get in there. Um, gonna lay this loom out nicely, tuck it under the back and then plug it all onto the injectors. Jamie's chucked the coil in there. He's run the ground for the coil off to one side there. And the other ground for the ECU is back there. This is a Volkswagen coil, although it has got KMS written on it. They are exactly the same. That can plug onto there. So yeah, a few more. Get in there, get in there. Um, so we've got all the loom connected. Coolant temp sensors here, because he hasn't got this one. So this is the standard blacktop one, um, which normally screws down the back of the block down there just above the standard alternator where that would sit, but he hasn't got it screwed in. So I've kindly lent him one so we can just check that everything works. Everything seems to be working well. Got the leads pushed on. These are Volkswagen leads, obviously on the Volkswagen coil. All the injectors are in. Everything's working and reading as it should. You've got an air temp sensor under the back of the inlet manifold plugged in. Uh, excuse the mess in here, very unprofessional. If I turn the ignition on. Do, 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 do. What am I missing? There we go. Everything is working as it should be. We've got all the readings I want to see. Air temp's right, calling temp's about where it needs to be. I've checked all the outputs. Uh, so, uh, I'm back down at the workshop with Jamie. He's been very busy making the loom look a little bit neater, as you can see. Ignore all these pipes hanging off. Um, he's rooted it all. He's put some little, you know, ties up here. He's clipped it in a little bit better, haven't you, mate? Tucked all the loom under the inlet manifold. Blocked off a few air leaks. I've crudely, and I mean, I'm gonna show you this on one condition that you don't judge me, crudely wired it up, like just the fuel pump triggers to one of the outputs and stuff like that. Wired up a quick fuel pump relay, put a bit of petrol in it, and go on, Mr. Ford. Obviously, it's still needs setting up, but. Very, very happy boy. So yeah. Finish all this lot up, mate. Plumb it all up, put some water in it and an alternator belt. And uh, we'll go and map it, eh? Oh yeah? Yeah. Oh, and some drive shafts. And some drive shafts. Let's have a quick look at the... Uh... Oh yeah. Idle's right, mate. Impressed for that. Spot on, that. Cool. Right, that will do for this video. You've seen how easy they are to wire up. Like, share, subscribe. Cheers, guys.